before we create the header, let's just understand the elemental, basically the setup, the screen, and uh, the layout and how you work with it. Because if you understand that, you'll be absolutely fine. We're just going to go over to pages for now. We're going to go to all pages and we're going to add a new one. And I'm just right now going to call it home. You know, nothing fancy there. When you've clicked home, you can do other things over here on the right hand side with WordPress with deciding on is there a featured image or what is the page attribute. I always make sure that it's got default template. There are options for Elemental Canvas and Elemental Full Width. If you go for Elemental Canvas, whatever header and footer we build will not be present. It's just going to be a full screen page, which is fine if that's the effect you want to go for for a certain page. But I just leave it as default templates. But anyway, what I'll do is I just type in home. I would then hit publish. So it's published the page. And then I would click edit with Elemental. And that now takes us into Elemental. OK. Now, I'm just going to go through some of the settings before we build the header, all right? So at the moment, we have the word home. We're going to get rid of the site title or the page title, okay? But let me just make sure you're okay with the layout. On the left-hand side, we have all of the widgets. We have the free widgets at the top, and we have the pro widgets, and there is a big variety of items there. Play around. Don't go crazy and add everything on just because you like the look of it. Think very methodically about what are you trying to get across on your web page. Very, very important. You know, your banners, your headers, your key statements, your call to actions, your buttons to take them to a subscription form, a contact form, or even a menu. You know, you click it and it takes them down the page. Think about what you want. What we also have is a navigator, which we will revisit as we start to build things. So as we add components, we can jump back to different sections or layout or pages or columns within the page. We have a history. As we add items, we can undo. And we have, and that it's not restricted to just your latest three. You can undo loads of things. So this is really great. We also have responsive mode. So whatever you build in desktop isn't going to look the same in tablet, isn't going to look the same in mobile. And I always change this to be 378 width because that's about the size of an iPhone XR. Anything above that will be covered as well. But the 378 is a pretty good uh, pixel width to have for your width of your screen. And then we have preview changes. You click that, it's going to take you to see a live version of your web page as what does it look like. To be honest, if you want to do that, you can also just click the arrow here. It gets rid of the stuff on the left hand side. And you can now see your page. You get the idea. Yeah. OK, right. So that is how you can um, basically that's the settings at the bottom. Very, very basic. If I just hit that grid there, this is where you access your widgets. And to put a widget on the screen, you just drag it on and drop it. And we're going to be doing that in the later videos. But the reason I brought you here was because we need to set some global settings. If I click the hamburger here. We're now going to set the site settings. OK, so we're now going to decide on the color scheme that's going to run throughout the website. Now, I don't really do if I click site settings, I don't really do the global fonts or the typography or the buttons. You can do if you want. So you're setting a standard scheme that you're going to use throughout the site. I like to chop and change those a little bit, depending on the page and the layout and what else is on there. That's entirely up to you. But the one I really want to focus on is the global colors. So I'm going to go to global colors. And at the moment, we've got red, uh, dark gray, mid gray, and then we've got an accent color. For now, I'm going to leave those as they are. But if I wanted to change them, I go to primary and I can add change my color scheme. I can be very methodical. So I might have a set color palette. And there are websites like colorpalettes.com and other places where you can go in, look at certain palettes and decide what are the color scheme you're going for. I'm just going to leave it as that ready color there for now at the moment. Modify it. I'm now going to add in another color and I'm going to pick pure white. I'm going to pick another color and I'm going to just go for pure black. You can add as many as you want. You can even title them as well. So I might, you know, I might just call this white or I might have a different shade of white. So let me just go here and I'm not going to go for white. I'm going to type F3, F3, F3 and it's a very light gray and I might call it light gray and or I might have a color for a particular banner or I might say button. So every button must be this color, which you could do in the button setting, really. But you could set out your color palette. What does this mean? 
a month down the line, me or my client might say, I don't want red anymore, I want blue. I change it here. And because I've used that setting throughout my website, I change it here and it will turn blue everywhere. Okay, so bear that in mind that you can control it. You can do individual colors on a page. So whatever you do here, or even here, whatever you do here does not change what happens on your page. But I just want to show you the global colors is a great way to make quick changes to the color scheme when you need to. Trust me, it is great to do this. So that's our color scheme that we have set up and I've clicked update. I'm going to hit X and I'm back to where I was. But I still have this title. I'm going to click settings and I'm going to say add, not add, hide title and the title is hidden and I'm now going to click update. Job done. Okay, no much more I need to do that. So now let's leave this page and let's design our header because that is not a header by the way. Okay, we're going to now design a proper header.